614 on this Tuesday morning, one day and a little bit of uh, change removed from the NHL trade deadline. Hockey Central host Darren Millard joining us uh, live this morning. Uh, Darren, thanks for this. A big win last night. Battle of Alberta Oilers take it 4-1 over Calgary. It puts the team one point back of St. Louis for the final playoff spot in the West. Do you think things uh, have changed when it comes to how they'll approach deadline day? Well, it's changed in the course of a week. Uh, last uh, week against the St. Louis Blues, if they lost that game, the Edmonton Oilers were going into full sell mode and were going to plan for uh, basically a non-playoff here in the Alberta capital. But uh, this time around, with those four straight wins and six in the last ten, they're into uh, playoff contention and they're realistic about their chances to qualify for the postseason right now. So uh, I, I really think the Edmonton Oilers may not be in a buying scenario but based on what we've seen in the last number of years, just not selling is a positive step for uh, Steve Tamalini and Ralph Kruger and, and that group. And uh, this is an opportunity uh, with the play of uh, Devin Dubnik and, and the kids really turning around where they are really thinking that they can qualify for the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Edmonton native and uh, Calgary flame at the time, Jay Bomeister arrived in Edmonton yesterday, didn't end up playing though. He's on his way to St. Louis. So is Jordan Leopold. Robin Regeer also coming back west, going to LA. Douglas Murray heading east to Pittsburgh. A lot of defensemen moving. Does this mean that Keith Yandel might be next to go? The way you're rattling off those names, you want to come in tomorrow and do my job? Yes, I do. You, you got it covered. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're going to have, uh, I think, a, a number of guys uh, on the move. Uh, Keith Yandel is the, is, is the guy that uh, I really think is is uh, appealing to a number of teams, including on the Eastern Conference side, the New York Rangers, who, uh, aside from last night, have really been scuffling lately. So uh, he has a big ticket, a couple more years left on his contract, but uh, it's crowded in Phoenix right now when it comes to payroll. And Keith Yandel is uh, not going to be the franchise defenseman of that group. It's going to be Oliver Ekman Larson. Mm -hmm. So I think the Phoenix Coyotes are really looking, if they can, to move Keith Yandel, who's, uh, who can skate and make that first pass. Some uh, liability issues in his own zone. But uh, the New York Rangers are a team that uh, loves making that big splash, and they aren't afraid to spend some money. And I think I think that would be the perfect fit from a, from a Keith Yandel point of view. Darren, obviously, I guess it goes without saying, last week's biggest splash was again led of the Penguins. Uh, they've been in the mix acquiring uh, Dar uh, you know uh, Morrow as well, Brendan Morrow, another captain. Uh, the Crosby injury makes things interesting. You never know. A broken jaw might he have concussion symptoms. Do they maybe look for some insurance heading into the playoffs? I don't think you'll see much up front from the Pittsburgh Penguins. I, I really do believe that uh, if they're going to do anything, they might add just a, another depth defenseman. But uh, uh, Crosby with the broken jaw, uh, they're fairly comfortable that he will be back within four weeks. You mentioned the concussion, and that's, that's a big mystery and uh, his uh, obvious history when it comes to, to those uh, side effects. And, and that will be a wait and see. But the good thing is he can't play for four weeks because of the jaw. So he's going to be able to just shut her down and, and take care of himself. And he's got uh, plenty of uh, experience to fall back on, on that aspect. I think they're set up front. I don't think you're going to see them do uh, much of anything. They've, they've done their uh, due diligence on everybody else and uh, the Morrow signing uh, from, uh, from Dallas and bringing him in and then uh, obviously Jerome McGinley who can float between all their lines. I think it's uh, in a weird way it's going to give Jerome McGinley an opportunity to really uh, float back and forth between uh, Malkin's line and then uh, up front and uh, on that number one unit and, and get experience playing with a lot of different guys because he already knows Jerome McGinley so in a, in a strange sort of fashion, it's going to uh, be a little bit of a benefit for Jerome McGinley. All right. Hey, Darren, thanks for joining us. I know you've got a busy day today and tomorrow. A Hockey Central on top of all of this. If there's no trades, feel free to phone in anytime tomorrow. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Thanks very much. That's Darren Ballard, host of Hockey Central on Sports. And, of course, they have trade deadline covered. It's tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Let us know what you think the home team should do. One point out of that final playoff spot in the West behind St. Louis. This will get interesting in the home stretch. City TV hair service is provided by Ricci Hair Company. Come in for a free consultation and let us reveal the amazing hairstyle you have inside you. Ricci Hair Company, style above the rest.